Yeah, today we are going to check out some old growth forest. We've just been driving around, finding some big trees. Looks like we're right in the zone. Perfect forest to check out. Maple, cedar, hemlock, fir. Whenever I go into the forest, I don't like to bring my keys with me. So I make sure I bury them or hide them somewhere close to my truck, just in case they fall out of my pocket. All right, looks like we found a little deer trail or something along that line here. Whoa, right off the bat. This is a good sign. We're in the right kind of forest, I think. We're looking for something with some big trees, some medium trees, and some little trees, as well as a lot of logs and debris. We're looking for mushrooms, especially these fungal pharmacy style mushrooms, the tree conks. I wanna make sure we're looking in a forest that has a lot of hemlock and dug fir. And you know, one thing about forests is that often we have this drive to find something, right? We don't actually find what we're looking for if we're so driven. Sometimes it's best to use our wide angle vision and just kind of slow down and get into the rhythm of the forest. And then you might see a few flickering squirrels. Sometimes, interestingly enough, I've seen like frogs around mushrooms and they're the ones that attracted me to those mushrooms because it wasn't until I noticed them that I started looking down in that spot. So most of our favorite trees that have mushrooms on them are not these ones like this that are totally moss covered and about 10, 15 years old. It's the ones that have fallen down in the last two to five years. Those are the real food for the mushrooms. A lot of them are like, yes, they're kind of competing for those trees. See, we have this older tree. There's no real fruiting bodies on there. But then we have this smaller, younger tree right beside it. And we're starting to see all these fruiting bodies. These are red belted polypores. And we know that the mushrooms are gonna like this, but they're feeding off this older tree and they used to have fruiting bodies on this. So if we start to peel this back, we'll see, ooh, look at that. See all this fungal layer in here underneath and a big slug. Hey buddy. But you see this fungal underneath layer here that's in there. So this is all more of that, that mushroom. Probably the same, I taste it, I'll be able to tell. I think that's the same red belted polypore that is on this tree. But what it's doing here is it's feeding and generating more life. So then it comes to a smaller tree like this where it's able to put out some fruiting bodies, like so. And we follow the tree up. And one of my favorite things for zoning into mushrooms is to drink the mycopea, which is this watery solution off the edge. That's what we're talking about. Wow, a little sweet, a little bitter, nice. I love the symbiosis. Here we have two different types of mushrooms sharing the same tree. All these red belted polypores, even though they're not all red, this is a different type of mushroom here. We got a Ganoderma aplanatum, which is our West Coast wild reishi. Let's just take this little guy. I love this. Its name is Artist Conk. We're gonna see a bunch more of these. Hopefully we find some big ones, but they call it Artist Conk because you can do art in it. Squirrels will eat these, as well as it was reported in Africa that the gorillas would pull these off the trees and chew on them. Now this is a rarity. We've got one of the largest sort of fruiting surfaces on an artist conch I've ever seen. As you can see, I'm on an old stump. Now this would be the original first growth of the forest. This is the kind of forest I wish we saw more of because in these forests, we're gonna see much more diversity of mushrooms. Right now we're sitting in a second growth forest, which is pretty awesome too. But you know, we got all these old stumps. Appreciate you. Thank you for being here. That would have been a 500 year old tree, 400 year old tree before they cut it. Mm. I love the forest. Woohoo! This here is a Dyer's polypore. It's not one that I use as medicine, but it is one that is used to make a nice dye. People like to use it for wool. Always good to take note of who else is in the forest with you. We got some squirrels eating those cones. 
Now here's our western red varnish conch. Now this is one of my favorite mushrooms in the forest. Sometimes when you find big old stumps like this, down at the bottom there'll be a big fat mushroom feeding off it. Wow. I just think it's so amazing how life grows out of life like this. Here we have an old growth dug fir dead tree and boom, out of it is coming another tree, actually a few more trees. In the forest, living trees are useful in the sense that they help shade protection and hold water, but it's really the dead trees that provide the most abundance and benefit for life around them. A lot of the bugs go in those, a lot of the birds start getting the bugs, a lot of the mushrooms will grow on that, a lot of the animals will start to pull up and eat those and create nutrients for themselves. So these older dead trees are probably the most beneficial part of the forest. Oh, this is crazy. You see how this tree is growing right out of there? This, this dead tree has decayed since it started. You can follow these roots. They're going all the way down to the ground here. Sometimes you get a lot of underbrush here and we want to walk on top of the trees in order to stay above it. Lots of different types of mushrooms in this forest. Here you are, a soft, oh, it's a polypore. Not sure what it is. If you guys know what this is, put a comment below. We have here a little baby russula. Now I was hoping it was a pine mushroom because they look kind of similar. Hmm, doesn't have that pine smell. This is definitely a russula. Now this mushroom is common and not that tasty. It's a famine mushroom if we have to eat it, but what it's telling me right now is that we are almost in that mushroom season where the edible mushrooms like the chanterelles and the pines and the lobsters are ready to go. So we'll be back here in another week or two, or as soon as the rain comes. All that the rain promises is mushrooms. <laughs> All right, uh, you can see here we've kind of changed the landscapes a little bit. We're into the skunk cabbage forest and we're starting to see, wow, look at all these big trees, whoa! Huh. There are so many awesome mushrooms in this forest. Here's another one of my favorites, turkey tail. Here's another little Polypore. Now I'm kind of excited about this. At first when I saw it from the distance, I thought it might be a tinder conch. I'm like, there aren't that many tinder conchs here, but let's check it out because it's got this layering. But now as I get closer, it reminds me of an agaricon, which is a mushroom of spiritual potency and immortality. Okay. Yeah, I think I can get a good vantage point on this forest. Here's some of those woolly ones that look like turkey tails, but are not. Now they're growing all along this tree. In fact, there's hundreds on here. Just because they're not turkey tails doesn't mean they don't have medicinal benefits. See how they have that brownish, pinkish underbelly and they're more woolly? Definitely different. Cooler mushrooms. As you can see, there are so many amazing mushrooms to be found in the West Coast forest. I hope you get out and find some of these, start adding them into your life, creating fungal pharmacy and good health with forest living. Ciao for now. See you again soon, friends.